thank you for this beautiful day that you've created for us to enjoy. A day to come out, to be together, to be of one voice as we sing praises to your name. You are the King of kings and the Lord of lords, and we love you. We thank you, Father, that you have made truth available to us. Because in this world, we know that it's filled with lies and deceptions, and the world is always trying to gather our attention and our allegiance and to follow along and to go wherever it wants us to go. But you have called us to make you the king of our lives, the, the king on the throne of our souls, and, and that we are to bring everything that we are to you so that you might cleanse us, prepare us, groom us, grow us to be more like Jesus. We thank you for your mercy this morning because we confess that we have failed to live as examples of your truth. But we long to grow up. That's why we've come together today because we want to hear your word and we want that word to wash us and to help us understand what it is that uh, needs to have attention in our lives, that needs a greater portion of the truth to cleanse us, to, to turn us back toward your heart. Always turn us back to your heart, Lord. We thank you for the work of your word, which is truth. But we thank you for what the truth has done in the past in our lives, is doing in the present in our lives, and will forever do in the future. So we thank you for all of it, Lord. Thank you for being all things, the beginning and the end of truth, and that as we give ourselves to you, we're going to find ourselves on that journey of truth. Help us to care for the truth. Help us to protect the truth. But most of all, help us to live it out daily. In Jesus' name, amen. So... I hope you had a lovely Thanksgiving, a wonderful time to enjoy good food, fellowship. Not everybody has that story, I realize that. But, you know, for me, it's all about the people around me, and I had lots of them around me for Thanksgiving, so it was good. It was a good thing. May God bless us all as we keep on responding to his giving. Amen? Remember that thanks living responds to God's giving. So we need to live in that place. So we're continuing our, our study on worship and wisdom, all right? Wisdom, wisdom, caring for the truth this morning. I want to just share a little bit about that. Do you feel like you know the truth? You feel like you have that wisdom growing in you that where you apply that truth to your life and, and you have that power going on. Do you feel like you have that going, moving forward, moving you ever forward, taking you on a journey but leaving you better than it found you? Amen? It's the word of God, the truth that always desires it's imparted, it's sent, it's planted so that it takes us and we are better than we once were, amen, in the truth, in our understanding of the truth. Now, we all want to think because we've invited Jesus into our lives that we have a full understanding of the truth. But I find out every day that the more I invest in the Word of God, the more I go to the Lord and say, show me your heart, I realize really how very little I know, all right? So if we find ourselves feeling like, yeah, we got this, we got this, you know, then sometimes I have a feeling that God takes us on a journey to show us we don't got it, all right? We don't got it. All right? He's going to show us. He's going to teach us. He's going to love us. He's going to give us mercy. He's going to cover us with the blood of Jesus. He's going to take us on a journey. He's going to say, I'm going to show you. I'm going I'm to get it to you. Do you want to know it? Do you really 
want to care for the truth. We can all talk. It's very interesting. I had this discussion not long ago with someone special to me, and, and this person says, oh, you know what? You know, let's just get beyond the, the Christian chatter, the, you know, like all of the, the uh, you know, emblems of our faith to really live it out. Because, you know, most anybody can talk Christianese, and, and many people can put a cross around their neck or, or whatever, but where is the truth in action in our lives? And that's where we have to find ourselves today, because Jesus asks that question. Cute story, but all too real, all too significant and relevant for us sometimes. Children were gathering at a crosswalk, and there were several cars. I'm sure you've done this before, right? Haven't you seen that, you know, that there's going to be a crosswalk? You know, the children are going to start crossing, light's still green. You're thinking to yourself, i got to get through this intersection because otherwise I'm going to be sitting there while all of this is going on for an extended period of time. Well, in the story, there's two cars in a row, the first car stops, so the second car can't press through. And all of a sudden, the person in the second car, a female, it's odd, isn't it, right there? This you could just stop right there. The first car was a gentleman, the first car, a female. Somebody go, what? Right? Because wait till you hear what happens. So the man in front stops, the woman has to stop. She was counting on being able to go through the intersection, and all of a sudden, she realizes she's not going to make it. She's late. She's going to be even later. And all of a sudden, the window comes down. The hand gestures come out. She's yelling. She's carrying on. She is mad. And she's letting the driver ahead of her know that she is not happy about what was going on. She's ranting. And all of a sudden, there's this tap on her window, on the back window, police officer kind of walks up and he says, ma'am, get out of the car, put your hands up. The woman gets out obediently, she stands up and he takes her, he takes her down to the police station, they fingerprint her, they take her picture, and they put her in a holding cell. She's there for two hours. She's really late now. <laughs> All of a sudden, the police officer that arrested her came in and said, ma'am, please forgive me, I've made a mistake. And she said, well, I should certainly hope so. Who do you think you are that you could treat me in such a fashion? And he says, well, please accept my apologies. He said, when I was behind you, and he said, and I'm looking at the back of your car, and he said, at first I saw the what would Jesus do on your license plate tag. Then I saw follow me to church. And then I saw, what, you know, like my boss is a Jewish carpenter. And he goes, and then all of a sudden I realized that you have a Christian fish on the back of your trunk. And he says, I just kept watching and watching and I realized, he goes, I made the assumption that you stole the car. <laughs> right? All the bumper stickers, the plates, the insignias, all of it sends one message. Do our lives send the same message? Right? Do our lives send the same message? You know, <clears throat> in just a minute we're going to read from the Gospel of John, but I couldn't help but think about the lesson of the parable of the seed that Jesus uh, taught his disciples about, right? And he said, you know, there's a seed, and, and some of it's sown on, on rocky soil and, and, and hard soil, and some of it's sown in, in you know, like, dry places, and some of it actually makes its way to um, fertile ground. He says the word is like that, the word of truth, and, you know, it hits 
hard, hard hearts, and it, you know, it just has difficulty making its way. Sometimes life springs up, but you know, like the cares of the world just kill it. And Jesus says, the truth is like that. You know, I, I send it forward to you. I want to sow it into your heart. What kind of soil are you going to receive it with? What, what, what is going to be in your heart? Do you really want the truth? Because if you're not careful, the cares of the world will um, choke out your care of the word. Of the word, which is truth. You know... Jesus, he was standing before Pilate. And here he is, the King of kings, the Lord of lords, the, the um, Alpha Omega, God Almighty. Scripture teaches that Jesus is the visible image of the invisible God. How could God go so far as he came from heaven and he took on human flesh. And he goes, I'm going to show you how to live. I'm going to show you how to love. I'm going to give you the truth in an action. So follow me. And, and all of a sudden, he stands before human power at the time. And he, he is truth incarnate. He's truth incarnate. And Pilate has no clue. A lot of people have no clue, right? Read it to you. John 18, verses 33 through 37. Pilate went back into the palace. He called for Jesus. He said, are you the king of the Jews? Jesus answered, are you saying this on your own? Or did others tell you this about me? We'll pause there for a second. Do you know that he is the truth about God? Do you know that? Or have you just heard that? Because it makes a difference how we live, doesn't it? Pilate said, do I look like a Jew? Your people and your high priest turned you over to me. What did you do? Jesus said, my kingdom doesn't consist of what you see around you. If it did, my followers would fight so that I wouldn't be handled over to the Jews. In other words, I'm no threat to you in Rome. But Jesus says, I'm not that kind of king, not the world's kind of king. I didn't come for a cosmos kingdom, a world kingdom kingdom. I came to bring you a godly kingdom, a God-filled life. Then Pilate said, so are you a king or not? And Jesus answered, you tell me. You tell me. Because I am king, Jesus said, I was born and entered the world so that I could witness to the truth. And everyone who cares for the truth, who has any feeling for the truth, recognizes my voice. There... There's a great collision in the spirit realm between the father of truth and the father of lies. And we on earth have this opportunity to choose. God, who is truth and love, he offers truth to us through the Son. And then there's this father of lies who operates in deception and a spinning 
of truth for his gain. Because whether we like it or not, and whether or not we agree with it, we are going to follow one or the other. And we're going to find ourselves having to choose more and more of how we're going to live our lives. Because, unfortunately, because we live in the world, sometimes the world starts permeating the church. People think all things are okay just because the world says it is. But if you spend time in the Word of God, you're going to know that not all things are okay with God. Whether or not human beings want to live a certain way is a choice. But be careful when you say that it's truth. Because the only one who has absolute truth is Jesus. He is absolute truth. Here's the truth. He has the heart of the Father. And he said, follow me, and I will show you the truth. I came to bear witness to the truth so that you don't have to question it. I will show you how to live out the commands of God in a practical way. You watch me, and I will show you, and you may know the truth. And as you live that out, it will set you free. There's so many people that have no idea how shackled they are, how bound they are by a, an ideology, an idea of who God is. This God would just never let anybody perish. This God would never put judgment on the world. This God is a God of love. Those are fairy tales. It's not truth. Truth is we are given choices, and we must choose. Jesus said, you can't serve God two masters because you will love one and you'll hate the other you have to choose and every day i say lord take me deeper in your word take me deeper for the truth i want that wisdom that you promised is mine in christ jesus i want to know how to live my life out every day every day not just I have a form of godliness, but know your heart. Help me know your heart, Lord. Do you want to know the heart of the Lord? See, because that's what it means to make him king of kings and lord of lords. Because there's all kinds of kings and lords wanting to talk into your life. They want to master you. Jesus just wants to set you free to the truth. You know, when I started my quest with God years and years and years ago of knowing, I think more than anything, and maybe this is you, I wanted to know who I was. I wanted, you know, I grew up with brothers and my parents, and they were two older brothers, and I'd watch them and I'd go like, they're great, I love them so much, but who am I? You know, I didn't really have a sister to chat with, you know, my mom became my best friend because we were just so, I'm just going to say it, we were joined at the hip, we were just so much alike. And so my mother just loved the Lord so much, so I just thought, well, you know what, I'm just going to kind of watch her and how she does things. And um, she was a great example to me for a lifetime. I mean, just, it was just so great. But all the time she'd be like, don't follow me, Mary, follow Jesus. Don't, don't get caught there. Just follow Jesus. You know, like, this is about your journey, Mary, not mine. This is, I got mine, and you got yours. And then she'd always end it with this. And you got this, girl. You got this, girl. She was like my cheerleader, right? Well, when I first started off learning about the wisdom and the love of God, you know, I was very young. And John and I got married. He was, we were laughing about the other day he was 22 and I was 21 and we got married and uh, we moved immediately from uh, I was from Michigan he was from Indiana my folks had relocated down to Florida we got married in Florida and then we headed back to Indiana and he finished school 
And during that time, it was a, a, a dry season for me, not because I wasn't excited about being married, not because I wasn't excited about our future together, because I was. All of those things. It was a wonderful, wonderful season for my life, but it was dry for me spiritually. And so I just kept saying, God, you know, like, what's going on? And it was like the Lord saying, well, you have lived through your mom's faith all this time, and you need to find out who you are, and so let's go. And he took me on a journey, all right? And it was priceless. What a loving God, right? That he would, you know, get us alone, and he says, who do you say that I am? And do you know my heart? And do you want to know more about me and how I want to take you on this journey? And so little by little, I thought to myself, you know what? I'm, I'm going to learn about myself. I'm going to make this journey with God. I'm just going to acknowledge him every day, and we're going to go. And so, you know, John and I lived in Indiana for six years, and then we moved back here. And, and it was just like the Lord saying to me, Mary, press in. Find out who I am. Go help your husband get started in that dental practice. Go give him everything that you would give me. Everything that you would do if I would, had called you to that, Mary, give your all to that. And I'm like, wow, you know, I thought you were taking me on a journey to learn about me. And you just asked me to lay my life down to go do that. Here we go, right? Here we go. And John and I had great times getting that started and moving that direction, but my heart was to keep learning about myself, right? <laughs> God said, put yourself, just put yourself down over here. I'm got, I got you. I got you. I'm going to show you some things. And so he took me along, and he says, if you just care for the truth that I've given you, we'll grow that. And we grew through that, and then came time to start a family, and I was thinking to myself, how awesome is this? And we had Joe and we had Jimmy. And in the midst of it, I got so sick. And it was just such a trial to try to take care of small babies and, and, and live uh, in, in that place of growing and developing and, and, and being sick. And I was sick for a year, really sick. And so... In the midst of all of that, God says, just keep your eye on me, Mayor. It's going to be okay. You're going to be okay. You're learning. And I'm thinking, but I'm not learning about me. I'm not learning about me. <laughs> so we just kept going, and I, I found myself um, being excited because the kids got ready, and they were in school, and I'm thinking, I'm going to school now because I had started, and I had quit. And... So I went back to school, and I'm getting going. I have spent, I spent two years doing, just like pouring myself into school, and all of a sudden, our younger son, Jimmy, started having trouble in school, and he was not doing well, and so all of a sudden, the Spirit of God says, well, I want you to quit what you're doing in school, and I want you to take charge out of your son. I want you to homeschool your son. Are you kidding me? I, I just was on a roll. I just was on a roll here. With, uh, Jesus, are you kidding me? The truth about myself, I'm just trying to figure out who, the truth of myself, God. And you want me to lay down that now? And you want me to come up? First, I lay down, and we get a dental practice done, and now I'm gonna, I lay down for sickness, and then I lay down for uh, homeschooling? Yep. Okay. Here we go. We're going to go. I ended up homeschooling both of the boys. The youngest one, who was actually a genius and had trouble in school because he was just ridiculous, and the other one, who's just such an overachiever. And so I actually homeschooled Jimmy through eighth grade, and Joseph graduated as I homeschooled him, and he went to college at 15. And so it was quite the journey. What did I learn during that time about myself? I couldn't tell you. 
I, I honestly, at the time, I just couldn't, I'm just like, okay, God, I'll just do that. Next thing you have on my plate, all right? We're going to do this. Do you, you do realize that we're talking years, right? Years. Teach me something about me, God. Teach me about me. Eventually, the boys went on with their things, and Jesus says, I'm going to take you back to school now. Okay. It's been a while. I'm not sure how to study anymore. You've made this significantly different cult for me because I was on a roll over here, and now i got to back up, and i got to figure out what I you know, dropped off over there, and I'm over here. I tell you what, the miracle of God came on that situation, and I finished that school, headed into seminary, went into seminary, finished that, and all of a sudden I'm thinking to myself, oh my gosh, you showed me who I am. And I had no idea that Christ in me would be a pastor. Somebody that comes along and is that wind that just helps others just to thrive, to to pick up their souls and just help them to survive. Not only survive, but to learn how to thrive. And to pick them up and to get them going on the right path. And the wisdom of God that he poured into me was not a, I'm just going to give it to you, Mayor. It was live with me, Mary. Care for the truth. And everywhere you go, tell somebody why you're doing it. I'm doing it because God laid it on my heart. I'm on a quest to find out who I am. (laughs) You know what I found out? Not really so much about who I am, but I found the heart of God for people. Amen? There is absolutely nothing that God won't do for you. I mean, think about it. He went from here to here, and he knew he was going to do it. He went from this cradle to the cross, and he goes, I love you. And there's nothing I'm not going to do for you. And there's nothing I won't get to you. Will you care for the truth? Will you care for my word? Will you let that word live in you? Will you let that word put your hopes and dreams on a cross and follow me anyway? Will you, will you trust me enough to know that I have a plan for your life and you're going to succeed and you're going to find yourself down the road and you're going to look back and you're going to go like, wow, Jesus, I see you now. I know. I know you're the truth. Do you know he is the truth? And if you will actually be so bold and so brave to follow him somewhere, you will find out about you in the midst of it? How do I know? The disciples, they are following Jesus all over the place, right? And... He takes them to the, I'm trying to think of it was the island of, of uh, I'm trying to think of the, Gad- I think he was actually the first time, I'm going to talk to you about where he fed the 5,000, but I am trying to, all of a sudden I'm trying to remember because he did two different miracles of such a nature, and I'm trying to remember, but it, around the Sea of Galilee, all right? And all of a sudden he says, He's there, and they're isolated. Can I tell you, Jesus is all about getting you just a bit isolated, like I was out of my comfort zone and out of my area of familiarity. Jesus is going to get you out of your comfort zone, out of your area of familiarity, and he's going to take you on a journey. And he wants to get something to you to show you about you. He wants to do that. And all of a sudden, so Jesus has got the disciples, and they're like, Jesus, look at this crowd. There must be 5,000 men here and women and children. And he's like, yeah, I bet they're hungry. And he's like, yeah, what are we going to do? The disciples are, what are we going to do? What are we going to do? What are we going to do? And he says, 
What's he say to him? What does he say to his disciples? You feed them. You feed them. I'm sure they sat back and went like, are you kidding me? Are you kidding me? You haven't taught us how to do that miracle. You, I, we have no idea what we're doing. You're actually going to just throw us into that? Yes. Somebody say, yes. Do you know why he does that? Because he knows that you and I need a boot to get out of our comfort zones. I'm seriously, I mean a boot. Because you and I, we like what we can control. And Jesus is about getting truth to you. And you can't control his truth. And you can't receive it unless you give him your heart. And that you're willing for him to change your soul. It's a change in your thinking, right? He messes with you. In the Apostle Paul, he talks a lot about truth, doesn't he? And he says that we are to, boy, I got, I'm glad I got that the right size. You're to put on the belt of truth. Put it on. Why do you need that? Do you know the belt of truth Jesus, amen, he's truth, he holds your life together. He has a way of making you understand security in a whole nother way. He, he gets us to a place where we're both frightened and faith-filled, and he goes like, follow me. You and I need to allow truth to be wrapped around us and bring the necessary changes in our life. And what's actually interesting to me is in the end days, so I'm going to turn to your neighbor and say in the end days. We live in the end times, in the end days, if you will. We live there. We absolutely live there. How do I know? I feel it in every ounce of my body. Every bit of me. All right? Say, well, people have been saying that for years, Pastor Mary. I haven't. I've lived 62 years, almost. I am just now saying that to you, aren't I? End times. They're coming. And here's what Timothy, well, Paul tells Timothy. I'll read it to you. About the truth. For the time is coming when people will no longer listen to sound and wholesome teaching. They will reject the truth. They will follow their own desires. They will look for teachers who will tell them what they want to hear. They will reject the truth and they will chase after lies. Do you think that's just an accident that that's in there? No. No. You and I have to live in such a way that we are living in harmony with the truth. And in that place, when you have that belt of truth around you and you are committed to the Lord of Lords and the King of Kings and you are committed to living in the light of his truth because he is light and in him is no darkness. And so when you're committed to do that, he's going to take you on a journey and he's going to shine a light on those dark places in your life. And you have a choice. Are you going to let him bring you to that light and bring the necessary change? Or are you going to live in the darkness and then try to find some place where they're going to teach you more about the darkness that you really prefer? See, I believe with all my heart that God's word is truth. And if I'm willing to let him sow that in the fertile ground of my heart, see, I know him. Amen. Nobody can take him away from me. He's, I have made him the Lord of my life. And if we're willing to let that get grounded in our lives, when, if we're willing to put as much time into spending time in the word of God as we are watching television or whatever it is that we do, our lives are going to start changing. 
And then as the end days continue to approach, you and I are going to be ready. We're going to be prepared because we're going to be able to discern the truth. Scripture says that only those who are faithful to the truth will know the difference between the truth and lies. And I prefer to live in the truth. Amen? Life has a way of shackling us, doesn't it? It just like burdens us and shackles us. And Jesus is this liberating truth. And he wants us to pay attention to him all the time. He's like, would you just let me love you? And, and we want to make everything about us and what we like to do and how we want to spend our time and who we want to be with. And Jesus, he doesn't care about all of that. He's, he says, I will get to you what you need to have if you will just follow me. And will you trust me through all of the things that seem like detours and you getting off your track? And will you just trust me because I will get you there? If you just trust me, I will get you there. We got all of this stuff living and moving in our minds. And oh my gosh, the world is messed up. Some, look at your neighbor and say, the world is messed up. You can't use the world as your compass. Please don't use the world as your compass. What are you going to use for your compass? You need to use the belt of truth. You need to use Jesus. Amen? He is going to hold your life together like this belt is holding in my midriff. <laughs> he has done amazing things in my life, and all I can tell you is that I know him. And because I know him, I know a whole lot more about me. See, I wanted to make the journey about me, but Jesus said, no, it isn't about you, although I treasure you and would give my life for you. It's about being witnesses to the truth. Will you care about the truth? Let's pray. Father, we just thank you so much for your love and your goodness. We thank you for your kindness, and we thank you, God, for the truth. The truth! Help us to understand that the truth truly is found in your heart and that as we make our way all the time to learn and to grow and to be willing to even sacrifice, oh God, in this world that hates that word, you ask us to lay our lives down, pick up our cross to follow you. But every time we're willing to do it without resisting, then we find ourselves farther down the road in a greater understanding of your love. And you ask us to take care of other people along the way. Stop over here. Do this. Do that. And, we, and stop doing this over here and keep going. And, and, and with all of the signals, if we will just walk in obedience, because your word, God tells us that the Spirit bears witness within us when we've heard the truth. And if we actually know Jesus, the spirit of Christ lives in us. Father, help us to be listening for the truth and help us to not just have an idea about your heart, but to know your heart. Help us to know your heart so that we can bear witness to the truth with others. I pray for anybody gathered here today that has never invited you into their life, oh God. <laughs> in such a fashion. It's just saying, God, we, I just, I need you and I want to know you. I pray, Father, that they'll just be bold enough today to invite your truth to live in their hearts. And for those that have loved you and served you but really don't know you, I pray that you'd make that clear to them today. I pray for a visitation of your spirit to wash over every heart that's gathered here in this room. I pray for them to understand the greatest love that they will ever be touched by and that they will understand that your truth is a gift that takes them from lies and, and false images to, the, to a pure image of your love. It's all about a pure image of your love, and it is the truth. Help us to make the journey and not despise when you light up those areas that really need attention. I pray for surrender. I pray for my heart to be surrendered. I pray for the hearts of everyone gathered here. 
to be surrendered. And I pray that they will give themselves fully to you, O Lord, to be the King of kings and the Lord of lords. Help them, Lord, carry the truth. In Jesus' name, amen. You know, when Jesus sends you to do something and you walk in obedience, he brings the power to do it to accomplish it. He would never take you there. Would he have ever taken the disciples to feed the 5,000 if he didn't know he was already going to provide for it? No, because he's love. If he takes you someplace and he invites you to serve him by caring for the truth, sharing it with somebody, sharing something that he wants you to share, do something for somebody, pray for them, whatever it is, just step out. Because if you just step out, you will find him there. And you'll know more about his heart, and you'll figure out a whole lot more about you. Be blessed.